Hey, welcome to the Jumpstart Podcast. This is episode 21 of the Jumpstart Podcast, the place where we give your children's ministry 10,000 extra points. You win. We're here at camp this week. I have my guest here. Uh, well, my guest is Brent McAtee, but I'm Brent Colby, and of course we have Dan Matier. Thank you. Uh, and today we're talking about using high schoolers, using teenagers in your children's ministry. Uh, we brought Brent McAtee because that's a specialty of his ministry. And here at camp, he's running that program here as well. Yeah, Brent, thanks for hanging out with us. So, okay, so you, re- you lead kind of our internship kind of experience here at camp. And you, how many years have you been doing that? Just three or four? This is my years? second year as intern director. And you bring a great team. And one thing I think that makes this camp so successful is that we have great interns. And you lead that team. So we just want to kind of pick your brain of how do you work with high schoolers in your children's ministry and what's that look like for you guys? Yeah, well, the great thing we all know about high schoolers is it's like free labor, right? I mean, you just tell them whatever you want to do and they just go do it. That's the way a lot of us start, right? I just need to get some people to do something, right? Yeah, yeah. But really, I mean, the thing I like to focus on is the kids that are helping need to get as much out of the experience as what we're getting, right? So it's not just for us to get free help, it's for them to gain leadership experience and to increase their abilities uh, with working in ministry. Yeah. So what are some things you do to to make that experience meaningful to them? Right, so what I try to do is is give them things to look for when we get started. So I may ask them to do a task uh, but at the same time, I'm going to ask them to look for different elements of what's happening. So we just came through mm-hmm. chapel uh, this morning, and I gave them a bunch of things I wanted them to analyze while we were going through it so that they could pick up on the keys to what's happening. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards, we sat down and we discussed, did you see what happened here and what happened here? And here's how we navigated this element and, and how we worked through the next piece so that they're always learning how to do it themselves. Kind of see the why behind the what a little bit. Yeah, and then once they've seen the why, now go back to our ministry at the church, uh, I like to get them involved. So I'll partner Mm. them with me. So we'll go teach together. And then when we finish teaching, we'll talk about, did you Mm. see what happened here or or how maybe we navigated that piece? What did I do in that spot that like brought, like for an instance, Kids always are losing attention, right? Right. And and our natural instinct is to shush them or ask them to sit up straight. But instead, we'll often have some other cue yeah. that will grab the kid's attention. So I'll have a discussion with my assistant teacher that's a high schooler. Say, did you see when they got a little squirrely? And then, you know, I asked them to repeat the last thing I said, and the kids all jumped up and mm. repeated it. And then they were back focused and ready to go again. Yeah. So, so then after we had them do it with me for a little bit, then we switch the roles. Yeah. They do it and I just help them. And then eventually Yeah. Like the beauty of bike trip the bike riders are behind us. (laughs) Led by a high schooler by the way. (laughs) Speaking of getting people involved though, I think a lot of leaders, a lot of children's leaders struggle with where do we get them, teenagers, teenagers involved? Because I think once once you have them involved, it's cool to do that. But some people are going, where do I even get these guys in? Yeah, so I think you have to create the opportunities where they have something real to contribute. So rather than just going and getting the supplies or, or grabbing the materials, having them have an opportunity to own something hmm. and to do it themselves is really important. And I think it's true of all volunteers. The more ownership you give them, they'll rise to it. The more you do it for them and yeah. they're, just, they're just you know doing what you've told them to do, the less involved they are. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, recruitment wise, I mean, you say, I mean, is there something that you look for in a student? I mean, is just willingness, is that it? And you'll work with that? Or is there some like qualities in a high schooler that are a must to be a part of this team? Yeah, actually, we're, I mean, we're really looking for ones that are ready to step up and take the next level. And honestly, there are times when I've had conversations with high schoolers and said, you're not ready for this leadership experience. Here's some things I'd like you to work on and then Mm. bring back in. So honestly, sometimes the higher the bar you set, the more they're anxious to achieve that bar and and be there. And sometimes the lower we set it, the harder time we have getting somebody. Yeah. What about this question? What are some of the, either the pitfalls or the things that you found not to do when working with teenagers? (laughs) You can't assume that a teenager is an adult. (laughs) Okay. I can't tell you how many times I've ended a service and we've all like, the kids are all hanging out and I start talking to a parent and then I look around (laughs) and realize I'm the only leader in a room. (laughs) No matter how many times you tell a teenager, I need you to stay till all the kids are gone, 
they won't do it. So you just can't <laughs> assume that they're going to do the same thing week after week. It's yeah. constant coaching. Um, you know, another thing that helps get the kids is, is make it fun. I mean, uh, we had a night with our kids' church team recently where we just had a Nacho Libre night. And we nice. ate nachos, we watched the movie, and in about 10 minutes, we gave them some instruction and training. Yeah. But it was really all just about relationships. So mm -hmm. if your kids love to be there and they feel like you're pouring something into them, they want to be part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool. Let me ask you a question, and we hadn't talked about this before, but it just kind of popped in my head. Your oldest daughter is, what, 16? Yep. Do you feel like that has any kind of uh, effect or impact on your relationship with teenagers because you have a, a family member who's a teenager? Certainly, it keeps me a, a little bit closer. Um, and but I've really enjoyed. I mean, I've enjoyed them for years yeah. because I mean, it's just fun to be hanging out with the younger kids. So I think that is helping now doing getting a draw because there are a number of her friends that are helping mm -hmm. out. But even before that, I think I had a pretty good catch on them. But again, there's spots where you can tell, you know, like, the kids see other kid, other high schoolers on the worship team. Mm. And so now when you use them in key places like your VBS and you've got that high school worship team, well, all the junior hires, they want to figure out how do I get to be part of that. And sometimes, like, if you make it a little bit hard for them to be part of it, they have to attain to it. Yeah. Uh, that helps. But, I mean, you just do it well and help them have fun. And they're going to tell their friends that they're having fun and that you're you're making an enjoyable experience for them. Wow, that's cool. What about this? What about the transition from a teenager who serves to now an adult who serves? Do you find that's a difficult piece to navigate? To get the same person to do it? Yeah, or? Because as they turn 18, 19, 20, and to continue to serve. No, we're actually navigating that right now with some of our key leaders. They're, they're ones that are headed to college, but they're not going away to college. And, how do we keep them involved? And again, it's how much have you invested in them? Yeah. I mean, yeah. If they're growing as an individual, yeah. they want to be around because That's they're good. they're getting more out of it. And so for a lot of them, I mean, I'll take them through an experience where we'll sit down during the week and plan out a whole lesson and I'll teach them how do I put stuff together and, and let them try it and they come back and they talk to me about it later in the week and then they go teach it. Yeah. So, I mean, giving them those experiences that they know they're growing as individuals is yeah. key. Well, when you talk about putting like a kit together, you have a, here at the camp, for example, there's a discipleship thing that they kind of work through. Some questions they're being asked, some, some questions that you've put in there to get them thinking about some specific right. stuff. What's some of that content you put in there and why'd you put it there? Yeah, so this time I took, um, I took some excerpts from a leadership book that, that I've read in the past. But that's more at their level. I mean, you can get a leadership thing that's way too advanced. Yeah, right. It's beyond where they are. But what I'm doing is trying to key them into what are some thoughts about how an emerging, emerging leader should think. Uh, and then a lot of things, uh, putting some scripture with it. Uh, and then uh, also asking them just some personal questions to have them evaluate who they are uh, and how they're developing and what their future might look like. Yeah. And so, again, you know, what I've experienced is a lot of the interns that were here last year wanted to come back again this year yeah, because they knew mm -hmm. that they were going to get invested in personally. Yeah. yeah. But half of it is we just go have fun together. Right. So, I mean, I was up last night until one o'clock with the interns <laughs> just hanging out, goofing around. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so again, having fun with them is a big deal. Yeah. What good. are, what are some things you've learned you should not, some things interns should not do? Some assignments maybe you've given them or some things you've asked of them in hindsight, you're like, okay, that's just, <laughs> that's too much. Right. I mean, you mentioned they're not adults, but like, right. what does that look like in a ministry setting? Yeah. And sometimes we put them in positions where we act, ask them to act like an adult would or right. think like an adult would and they're just they're not quite there yet yeah. so you have to make sure it's it's an appropriate because if you stretch them too far and your expectation is too big uh, that they're going to fail miserably then mm -hmm. then you lose them for the future but if you give them something that will stretch them without breaking them you know that really helps so right. yeah. so don't don't set them up to be an adult where they're not an adult yeah right? yeah it's cool yeah, good stuff. So people got questions for you. Maybe they want to know how to start some steps. Is there a way they can get a hold of you? Or oh, certainly. They could, you they could email me. Or are we going to put it on the bottom of the screen? Yeah, we'll put it, we'll put it right, right here. Right here. Good? Yeah. Uh, it's just B-M-C-A. Wait, could you hold it as you put it? <laughs> okay, thank you. B-M-C-A-T-E-E -E at westgatechapel.com. Perfect. That's good. <laughs>
Awesome. I love I love answering questions. I love talking about young leaders. It's it's That's a good. passion of mine. Probably my favorite thing that I've done in children's ministry is train up young leaders. And this last year, I got the privilege to launch two of them into full time children's pastors. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. That was really fun. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. cool. Thanks for being our yeah, guest. We awesome. appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. 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 Tell you that bacon don't look rancid to me.